I'm Josh Freeman, and you're watching Tried and True. The guys over at Auto Revolution allowed me to host this episode of Tried and True. Welcome everyone to Huntington Beach, home of Freeman Fabrication. So a ton of sacrifice by myself and my family, a lot of time away from home. Kids coming down to the shop to see dad, well he works on Hammerhead, and here it is. Inspired by my son Gage, in love with sharks, and I really think that the front end has that real wide, wide-eyed look like a hammerhead shark. Hammerhead's kind of just a way to show everybody that what we're capable of here at Freeman Fabrication, from suspension work all the way to body modifications, sheet metal work, you know, it doesn't need to just be a patina truck. It can be shortened, it can be chopped, it can be shaved, it can be modified, it can, it can change body lines, it can do just about anything to a truck if it's made out of metal. We just make it happen. Here we got a 1972 C10 with full chopping block front and rear suspension. Nice slosh tubs that'll get repainted. Full porter built gas assist shocks that now open up even higher, new and improved. We got some intro 24 by 15s out back. These are some badass wheels. 22s up front, tons of tread in the back of this bad boy. Things laying out real nice in the chopping block body drop mounts. We still have some more work to do on this truck, but so far it's turning out great. So today we're gonna to show you how to install a steering column from I Did It. This black powder coated unit is a tilt style column. It also has a column shift that is set up as a direct replacement for a C10. The kit includes turn signals, tilt function levers, and a hazard knob, plus direct fit wiring plugs. To attach the column to the rack and pinion, we picked up two Borgeson joints and a length of double D shaft. So here's why we're replacing this column today with an I Did It steering column. Get a better angle at this uh, rack and pinion here. We're gonna get a nice I Did It column here, shorten it up so it won't impede on this control arm here. Get a little, get, if we move it back, we can get a better angle on everything. So we start off on the inside by removing the steering wheel. Sometimes you need a puller. We have a steering wheel that just went on not too long ago, so it comes right off. Remove any of the uh, access plates, any kind of trim, anything like that. The rubber's pulling back. Start disconnecting some wiring. In this case, we have the normal Chevy plug. It takes those two little clasps on each side. We just kind of wiggle it, give it a good pull. These trucks come apart pretty nice. So from the underside, we do have that clasp that needs to come off, but first we need to unplug all the wiring, such as this neutral safety switch here, and pull back some of the rubber. There's like a rubber seal that seals up the firewall from the outside elements, you know? And then we just pull off that clasp, like I said, that holds the steering column in place. And it's kind of nice to have a buddy help you hold the column from the inside, and then you can rip around to the outside and take off one last pinch pull. Now in the engine bay side, we're gonna pull off this little clamp here. There's just a one bolt, it's like a pinch bolt. Spread the clamp open, and it'll allow you to remove the column. To get it the rest of the way out, you just gotta remove this bracket and have a buddy pull it through the other side for you. So here's a comparison between the two columns. The Iditic column, you can see, has a adjustable linkage for the transmission in the same spline as the factory one, just a shorter version, all new. So put this bracket on, like I said, keep everything kind of loose. Just get that on there for mock-up purposes so you can get the D-shaft and the borks and joints on, get a good measurement, make sure you get the column adjusted the proper length. Slide the clamp back over snaps into place and then you have the one pinch bolt. Like I said, leave the pinch bolt loose so you can mock it up, have some movement in the column to be able to get everything set once you get to the inside. So here's the pinch bolt. Hand tight's fine. Give it a little wiggle, make sure everything's set in its place. It's good for mocking it up so you get your D-shaft length and everything. So here's the clasp I was referring to from the inside. Outside of the firewall still loose. We're gonna mock this up to make sure we get our length. So we get these two bolts in here to cinch it up and that way we can set our length. So just tighten these two up. Check your column to the, to the instrument cluster for your length, and then we should be good. So here you can see that our column is much shorter, which gives us a better angle on our rack and pinion. So the shaft is shorter, it doesn't impede on that control arm anymore. It gives us a much better angle on our rack and pinion. So here's our standard Borgeson joint. If you look in here, you don't want that shaft to come through and hit the other end of the shaft while it's at its pivoting point. So you want to be able to visually see inside of there and make sure that you back it off so it sits flush, like right there, so that you can get it to, to pass through without colliding into each other. So 
We give it a quick little cinch, tighten it down, and then we have a good point to measure from. So now that our top one's set, we address the bottom one. Same rule of thumb as the top one, same process. Make sure that D-shaft, in this case the spline from the rack and pinion, doesn't stick through too far. You want to make it flush to that inside part so that you don't have any binding issues. So we cinch it down just like we did on the top. And now we can get a good measurement for our D-shaft. So grab a tape measure to be able to measure for the D-shaft. As a rule of thumb, I kind of use that machined edge right there to measure from. I'll always cut a little long and trim. You can always just cut it down a little bit, but it looks like here it's about 13 inches. Now that we have our D-shaft cut to length, we want to slide it up as far as we can go to get it into the lower Borgeson joint. So we get it in there, sit it flush with the top and bottom, and cinch down our pinch bolts. By cinching down the pinch bolts, it'll make marks so we can pull it back out and make a little detent for the Allen to set itself up. So now you can see it clears the frame, gives you a much better angle on the rack and pinion. So you can see here they provided an adapter to the GM plug so you can put it into your factory harness. So it just snaps right back into place and then you tuck the wires and zip tie them up. I did it supplied all new stainless steel and billet knobs. In this case we got black knobs, kind of emulate factory, but a much cleaner look. As you can see, the black billet knobs thread right onto the stainless levers. Get them all threaded on, and we're ready to go. So now you can see here the supplied little billet knobs, the little set screw. I'm gonna tighten that up. Do it on the back side so you don't see it as much. We already have the billet knob installed here on the tilt column. And then this right here, this is the directional. You do not want to over tighten this. If you over tighten it, it'll end up cracking the plastic, which then that whole piece in there, you have to try to replace it, source one, get it, call I did it, get a new one. So you want to set it up to once you have it. Our column, everything is still kind of cinched loosely. Clock it to where everything's sitting level and clean. And then let's put on the steering wheel. So now we're just going to install the steering wheel. We didn't put the horn button in. There's a little spring and a wire that goes through there because we're going to mock it up. We're going to take the steering wheel off a couple times. This won't be the steering wheel that we end up with. And we'll have to clock this thing a few times, get all the steering straight, get everything set up. So there it is, sitting straight, steering straight. Let's not forget about the hazard knob. We forgot this little guy. Screw it in gently, it's into plastic. Same thing as the directionals. We do not want to over tighten it. As you can see, this universal joint here is doing its job perfectly. We make sure that the spline doesn't stick through and make sure the D-shaft doesn't stick through. We don't want it to, to bind on this universal joint as it rotates like that. So here we notch back the frame to give a better angle on the D-shaft and allow a little bit more clearance for headers. Make sure that you tighten down the set screw and then cinch down the nut to lock everything into place. So continue tightening all the set screws on the Borgeson joints until the D-shaft is tight. As you can see, we got a ton of adjustment here. Up, down, locks into place real nice and tight, get it exactly where you want it. Okay, we have the shift link lever. Whether you want to do a standard mechanical and or a cable, it has plenty of throw either way and it's fully adjustable you can see these four screws here to clock it in any direction you want to get the most amount of pull out of it or push out of it as you can see here you've got full motion whether you have an overdrive or a three speed or a four speed and it locks back into place just like factory and as you can see this direct fit i did it column has a beautiful powder coated black finish hey everybody had a blast today showing you guys how to install this i did steering column for tried and true I'm super stoked to show you my latest truck build, Hammerhead. Color blue and the wide front end and the white and blue kind of set it off and make it look like a Hammerhead shark.